Let's start off um, with a long-awaited launch of an L1 SWE, um, which, um, for those of you paying attention, is one of two blockchains that functions using the Move language. Basically, it was born out of Facebook's Libra stablecoin project. But anyway, um, we called in the first line a buzzy layer one project in this article that... Um, um, Liz, um, our Coindesk reporter, wrote about it, but it has not launched without controversy. It um, has a $2 billion valuation, a token um, that kind of has this like confusing distribution. Um, we don't know who it went to, this um, sweet token. They didn't do an airdrop, which is something that's kind of the norm these days. Also, its speeds were slower than its main competitor um, called Aptos, another one of these Facebook um um, uh, I, I guess uh, birth. I don't know. It came from Facebook. It's another one of those. It's kind of hard to explain how it how it all comes together. But anyway, yeah. Gary's. If you guys have any takes on this whole SWE thing, mainnet launches are exciting. They're often rocky. There's been very few that have gone off without a hitch. I know Aptos also had some issues mm -hmm. at launch. Uh, but yeah, the idea here, I think, is that there's this new generation of more performant blockchains that court people with various programming languages that aren't Solidity and are obviously a bit more uh, friendly to Web2 developers. And that's sort of the pitch, right? And there's several chains out there that are making essentially the same pitch and it's essentially that hey we're faster we're better and we can get devs from the broader world rather than just those ethereum nerds who code in solidity right uh whether or not any of that will pan out is very much to be determined right um i think ethereum as the leading smart contract blockchain is looking pretty good i mean it has that critical mass of developers who are building stuff and launching stuff but there are certainly these all l ones who are looking to get in on some of that euphoria and craziness that we saw during the last cycle with solana and others right so sui is certainly within that sort of cohort of chains that wants to be bigger and better we saw some headlines that sui is you know allegedly a solana killer um as solana was an ethereum killer when it launched however many years ago so there's there, certainly this jockeying out there for apps for users for developers and mainnet really is that that go to market that big we are live now let's do this thing um, certainly the horse race between Sui and Aptos is interesting uh, certainly the fact that they're both born out of the ashes of Libra is interesting but it's really just gonna come down to whether or not people show up and do stuff on this blockchain or whether or this becomes another token that gets traded, flipped for a quick buck. I think a lot of people are speculating that that may be the case after this mainnet launch. And there's been obviously that jostling from Justin Sun and others to get in on this. Uh, but time is absolutely going to tell if any of these upstart chains have the staying power that we've seen from Ethereum, which is still early, still nascent. You know, there's not a ton of on-chain uh, DAP activity on that chain even. So uh, certainly these upstarts are, are trying to position themselves for that next sort of bull cycle where people enter the space and do stuff. But hey, it's one to watch. Uh, early to, early, it's probably too early to say uh, what the mainnet launch is gonna, gonna foretell for SWE and their team. But Jen, I'll toss it to you. You know, I looked at this story through a bittersweet lens, right? I thought about all the layoffs we've been talking about recently, a lot of them coming from Meta, and it made me a little bit exciting to, to see what direction all of this new talent that's entering the job market is going to do. We're talking about these two rival blockchains, both have ex-Meta employees working on them, both trying to solve a problem that's been um, one the industry has faced for a really long time. You know, how do we get faster, cheaper transactions? How do we get stuck? steady fees across the board. And so I'm kind of excited to see what all of this talent who's entering the job market is going to do. There are so many issues to solve in this industry. And sometimes it takes uh, people who have been operating outside of the industry, who have been building outside of the industry, who have worked on applications that have seen billions of users, who have worked on user experience for the everyday person to come in and look at problems through a different lens. And so I am just excited and curious to see what all of these meta employees who are entering the job market are going to do as I read this story. Zach, I think I saw your hand go back up. Yeah, I want to throw a question to Sam. I know we've seen a lot of stories about sort of the token speculator aspect of this launch. I want to talk about on the, on the dev side. I mean, what's the vibe? Are, are, like, is this pitch to devs, hey, come build here, resonating with anyone? Uh, is it something that is attracting teams? Or is there just so much dilution among these all L1s that it's hard to sort of get that critical mass? Yeah, um, there's a couple ways to look at the the dev side of this. I have heard good things about Move broadly. So um, Aptos and Sui both kind of took different 
tax to the way that they're implementing that technology into their chains. And I've heard, um, you know, this is broadly speaking, but I have heard good things about SWE relative to Aptos in terms of the developer experience. Um, but they are kind of similar things and they are competing in, you know, similar turf for similar developers. But Aptos and SWE are both kind of big, you know, backed by these heavyweight VCs in terms of their tokenomics, but also in terms of the incentives that they're going to give to projects to fuel their ecosystem. So um, Ethereum did this to an extent, but you saw this to a larger or, or at least more visible extent with something like Solana, where they paid, you know, or I, I shouldn't say paid, but um, where they, you know, would reward grants and other sorts of incentives to developers to develop apps on that chain, on Solana. Now, this was positive in terms of recruiting developers, but left a sour taste in some investors' mouths and some others because, you know, it might incentivize bad behavior, sort of mercenary developers that come in, develop tech, and then leave for the next chain that has a ton of funding, but not much else. So there is going to be a question around whether these developers are, you know, actually organic and going to stick around because they like the technology or they just want those handouts. Uh, Zach, I saw your hand back up again. I mean, that's, I mean, I guess that's my main question. I'm going to toss it back to you, right? Like, is there appetite for another ride around the merry-go-round, right? Like, are we going to see the same Solana playbook that happened in that massive run-up that that chain saw with a bunch of projects building there, a bunch of TVL being attracted to that chain? Like, is, are we just running that back with like these new upstarts that happen to use Move, uh, you know, rather than, you know, Solana's stuff? Like, I don't know. That's my main question. I'm just curious what your thoughts are. I mean, I, I my personal uh, opinion is it, it kind of feels like we are kind of running that back. I mean, I, I report a lot on the Ethereum community and maybe to take my opinion out of it, just to talk about what I hear when I talk to those sort of, um, you know, Ethereum OGs who are a little bit more, you know, purist when they talk about these upstarts and they do have a reason for that um, to kind of like, you know, look up or look down at, at these newer chains because they're so invested in this incumbent ecosystem. But anyway, that out of the way, a lot of these Ethereum people do kind of scoff at the app tosses at the Swedes at the Solanas before for, you know, exactly what we were just talking about. Um, and they would say that developers are not actually going to stay in these ecosystems because that not only is the technology in their view not as, um, you know, resilient, proven, so on and so forth as Ethereum's, but simply the community is not there. So if you're going to build something absent those, you know, VC incentives, um, you know, you want a community to be there to invest. And SWE simply does not have that. Aptos does not have that as a result of them being newer. Um, and they certainly, by the way, in SWE's case, didn't help get new investors by kind of not shooting down the prospect of a potential token airdrop and then choosing to forego an airdrop. So you you had a bunch of people who were farming, you know, um, or, or hoping to kind of farm for a SWE token, uh, you know, prospective community. But anyway, um, it, it didn't work out. They just let people buy the tokens. And there's good reasons for that, in my view. But anyway, yeah, um, the lawyer, the, you. you know, a lot, lot of legal questions yeah. around whether or not. Yeah. Is prudent uh, in this environment. I will say we did see a presentation from Miston Labs, the main creator of the Sweet Blockchain, last week at Consensus. Uh, looked pretty performant and cool with an early focus on gaming. So yeah, we'll see what happens now that Mainnet yeah. is.